Our next guest just voted to find Lois Lerner in contempt of Congress. And the congressman says Lerner's efforts in depriving the American people of the truth and her refusal to meet her legal obligations left him with no other choice. Joining us now, Congressman Scott Desjardins, a member of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Congressman, good to have you with us. Uh, vote uh, decisive uh, and historic. Uh, your thoughts on where the House goes from here? Well, now we wait to see what the courts will do. We need to hear from Ms. Lerner one way or the other to get to the bottom of this investigation. And what, uh, as we have watched this same proceeding against the Attorney General, the first uh, U.S. Attorney General to ever uh, be held and cited for contempt of Congress, but where do we stand uh, with that? contempt proceeding and result, and and will it ultimately have any influence on the outcome, and will the truth be produced by this administration? Well, we certainly hope so, and right now, you know, that's why we're asking for a special prosecutor, because the Attorney General himself has not been forthcoming with documents in past hearings, and so we think it's really important to get to the truth that, that uh, you know, we bypass, in a sense, Eric Holder, and maybe he would be grateful for this because you're coming from an administration who at first feigned outrage over this incident and then uh, goes on national TV to say there's not a smidgen of corruption. We have an attorney general whose department leaked the fact that there would be no criminal charges in this case. So I don't think the American people have much confidence that uh, this administration is going to be forthcoming and that the attorney general, who's supposed to be the highest authority for law enforcement to land, has also not been forthcoming. And, and, and the scope of the scandal is, is, actually, is vast. I mean, the Judicial Watch federal lawsuit against the IRS, representing 41 organizations in 22 states, uh, where, where does that proceed? Uh, and how is this finding of contempt against Lois Lerner helpful in that regard? Well, there's people who need answers. You know, the fundamental principles of how we vote in election in this country is at risk here. There's people who have withheld their ability to speak freely in a presidential election, possibly affecting the outcome of an election. So it's imperative, whether you're a Republican, Democrat, that we get to the bottom of this and, and restore faith in our election system. And I think that there's, without a doubt, corruption here that was admitted even by the inspector general assigned to this investigation, Russell George, that these groups were improperly targeted. And they were conservative groups, not, you know, they mentioned that they were right. liberal groups, but the liberal groups were not uh, subjected to the same scrutiny and delays. Uh, and, and which is absolutely uh, goes to the heart of the, of the charge uh, in this scandal that the IRS was targeting conservative groups and the response, the official response of the administration uh, on various levels and various departments by various uh, officials well, has been that they targeted both liberal groups as well as conservative groups, which was a patent uh, misrepresentation, to put it kindly. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's totally been debunked. And, and Lois Lerner knows that uh, she has more to say. You know, she, she came in, professed her innocence, said she did nothing wrong, made a statement of fact, and then we uncover emails that show that she was trying to divert these cases from Cincinnati, the very people that she initially blamed them on. We brought these people into the hearing. They said they felt like they'd been hit by a nuclear bomb when they heard Lois Lerner throw them under the bus. We know that there's testimony or at least texts and personal emails that implicate Lois Lerner. So the reason we're having to go to this ex extent is that she needs to talk to us. So the investigation stops right now with Lois Lerner. I think we all know that it goes higher up, but we need to get to those facts. And Congressman, tomorrow the uh, special committee vote uh, in the House, the Benghazi Special Committee, uh, the vote, uh, a foregone conclusion. What will be the effect and next steps? Well, you know, Benghazi is a, another uh, incidence where the, the American people is, are, or their confidence has been shaken in their federal government and in their uh, administrative office, executive branch, in, in, uh, to be specific. So here we have a case 
where this story, this YouTube video story was propagated, and you see Jay Carney dancing around on TV, it's like this is their lie and they're going to stick with it no matter how silly they look. We know, everybody knows, most of America knows for a fact that uh, you know, this simply was not the case, but yet they choose to stick to this story, and it shakes the credibility of the executive branch. We haven't seen anything like this since 40 years ago with Watergate, and the timing is almost similar as well. Uh, you know, we're about a year in, the president's acting like he has nothing to do with it, it's a phony scandal, move on. But bottom line is the credibility of the Oval Office is at stake here, and Benghazi is a perfect representation of that. Congressman, we thank you very much. Scott Deschamps, we appreciate it. Time for a look at uh, last night's online.